Hi, my name is Ernesto Pacheco. I am the Director of Visualization at Canon Design. I am responsible for the research and development of immersive technologies as well as to the implementation of collaborative tools into our design practice. I'm also managing the Visualization Network of Canon Design, which is our internal group of over 100 individuals that focus on the exploration of workflows for visualization. Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Petrowski and I'm a licensed architect at Canon Design. I graduated with a Bachelor of Architecture degree from Virginia Tech in 2014, and I've been with large architecture firms since. Currently, I'm a project designer and architect in a Baltimore office, primarily responsible for developing design concepts, producing imagery, whether it be renders or animations, and ultimately project documentation. Thank you for joining our session on how to motion is democratized in visualization at Canon Design. We would also like to send our appreciation to Epic Games for the invitation to present at Unreal Fest 2020. At Canon Design, we leverage the heart, passion, and intelligence of our more than 1,000 creative thinkers to develop solutions for some of the greatest challenges facing our clients and society. We do this through a design approach we created called Living Center Design. Living Center Design realizes that to create a world where people continuously flourish, we must address the complex interdependencies that exist between people, businesses, community, society, and the environment. Our ability to help organizations realize life-centered outcomes is one of the reasons Fast Company named us a world-changing company and one of the most innovative design firms in the world. From architects and engineers to doctors, researchers, builders, digital technologies, and beyond, our people are the driver of our firm's success. We strategically build collaborative teams best suited to help each individual client address their challenges, achieve their goals, and reach new heights. Real-time rendering has changed the way we work at Canon Design. It has empowered our designers to develop and explore a vast number of design iterations without having to worry about the time-consuming rendering task at hand. Our teams are no longer concerned about the hardware requirements of CPU rendering in a more traditional rendering workflow. In real-time rendering, the render viewport is processed at a high speed so that it looks like the 3D world exists in real-time when the user interacts with the level or the experience. Interactivity in frames per second are important roles in the real-time rendering process. Therefore, if you want to move a piece of furniture in your level, you need to make sure that the actor's movement is refreshed before processing the next image and that it is calculated at enough speed for our eyes to perceive it as a natural motion. So let's talk about how twin motion can optimize our workflow. In our process, there are so many variables that can really affect the ability to have a streamlined workflow. So how does this affect our work directly? First of all, it reduces the amount of second guessing. We can instantly visualize these results of our design decisions. You know, we can quickly compare multiple design options, whether that be material changes, revised forms, or even making detailed decisions. Number two, the support of accurate content within the program saves a ton of added time in a typical post-production process. We'll touch more on this later on. Third, it starts to provide more in-house opportunities. The title of this presentation is Democratizing Visualization at Canon Design. And utilizing twin motion in our workflow has really allowed all of our studio to have the ability to produce quality imagery for our presentations and our clients. Anyone that's running SketchUp, Rhino, or Revit can instantly create these quality images. Finally, there's the ability to spend more time creating and not staging. We'll touch on more of this later again, but working with materials, entourage, and lighting all in one program that twin motion offers can really drastically affect our workflow. So to really understand the impact that twin motion and real-time rendering can have on workflow, it's important to have an idea of what a typical design process is and how we use this process and design thinking to constantly innovate and push our ideas forward. So in, in the simplest form, the design process could be broken down to five steps. You start with empathy. You understand some of the feelings of who you're designing for, who is going to be impacted by this project? What are some of the other project drivers that may affect the users for this project? Second step is defining your problem. Where is this building at? What is the program of this building? What are we hoping to achieve with this? Then we get into ideating, starting to come up with as many ideas and concepts as we can, you know, sketching out shapes and forms, looking at context, looking at how the program dictates the shape of this building. And then we really get into prototyping. And this is when we get into our modeling software. This is when we use SketchUp or Rhino or Revit to really start to visualize the building and see the mass of the building as it starts to take shape. And then we begin to test it. 
This is where we use programs to uh, create images and animations to share it with the client to gain their feedback. And we ultimately start to use this process, which appears more linear on the screen, but the process really starts to be more circular. And we start to create iterations and we start to create the next versions of our concepts, building upon all of these five steps. And these last two steps in the traditional design process are really where we can see twin motion help to enhance our process. This is really where the design starts to develop. We're making multiple iterations. We're sharing with the client constantly with new images, animations, and the ability to link the model with a real-time rendering program really makes this quick. One of the best ways to visualize how twin motion can save time in the design process is by comparing a traditional rendering workflow to the new and improved rendering workflow with twin motion added into the process. So the diagram on the screen is showing your traditional steps in a design to render workflow. We start with our sketch, we start with our design concept, and that's really the ideate phase of the previous images we were looking at. From there, we're going into modeling software. We're going into Rhino, into Revit, into SketchUp to start to prototype and start to build our ideas and our concepts. We then can export our model and typically place it into a rendering software. And that's when we start to work with how the building is feeling, how do the materials look, what is the lighting, how are shadows reading on the building. After that, we would normally jump into a post-production software. That's when we're really trying to evoke the feeling that we want our image to produce. We're working with our light levels. We're working with entouraging. We're placing in users to the space. We're bringing trees. We're bringing vegetation to really build the whole feeling of the image. And from there, we can export the image, place it into our presentations, review it with the client. And really, we go back and we start this process, this cyclical process over again by going back into the modeling phase. And we start this process all over again. And twin motion really helps us in this cyclical design process of constantly updating, constantly coming back to our concepts and refining them and then producing them for our clients. So you can see the steps that were in the traditional process before have drastically been reduced when we insert twin motion into our workflow, because we can go from that concept sketch and then we can jump into our modeling software. And instead of having it completely separated from the rendering process and the post-production process, we link our building model together with twin motion, and we can really start to condense the amount of steps that were in our process before. With twin motion, you can put in entourage, you can work with your building lighting, you can work with your context, and you can export the images all from here. And it really simplifies this process that happens while we're updating our designs. And in the end, this really saves us in time, it saves us with man hours, it's really simplifying how we work. So let's look at some of the good and the bad aspects of using twin motion and using real time rendering in building design. So some of the good, you really have fast lighting, you can really work through all of your different iterations and see the effects that lighting will have on your building. You can create multiple still renderings. You can create different scenes that'll enhance your design narrative. Say you're flying around the model and you really like the way that the building reads in its context. You can freeze that image, freeze the entourage and really quickly produce a still rendering. And just as fast as you can do a still rendering, you can do an animation. You can pick these different important locations throughout the model and string them together very quick through a real time process. And just like you can create animations, you can hook it up to virtual reality. You can create an immersive experience at these key moments. In architectural visualization, our main goal is to achieve the highest possible degree of photorealism at a minimum rendering speed of 24 frames per second. That's the minimum a human eye needs in order to create the illusion of movement. For real-time presentations, and specifically for virtual reality, the standard is raised to a minimum of 90 frames per second to allow for a smooth and pleasant experience by the user. This is where real-time rendering excels. Implementing real-time rendering into our design process introduces a new set of challenges. We will talk about challenge number one, which is how can we produce more and faster? By leveraging the power of GPU, we are able to produce quick feedback iterations without having to worry about long rendering times. Nowadays, we can produce a multiple number of deliverables using the same real-time rendering 3D model. This has opened opportunities for all levels of kind of designers to be more involved in the design process and to produce with confidence powerful visual communication materials for internal and external use. We have been using Twinmotion since 2019. 
Back then, we were very pleased to learn that it supported PBR materials. This played well with our internal pipeline by allowing us to continue to take advantage of texture maps created with Substance Designer. Adding to this, Twinmotion comes with an outstanding library of materials, which also includes a robust system to create and customize shaders for special cases. A user can save 3D assets to the user library, which expands the level of customization that can be achieved with this application. One thing that is very important to understand is that Twinmotion pre-bakes the first pass of light on import. It also applies ambient occlusion, which can be turned off or adjusted as needed. Materials will affect how light reacts to the space. Using a PBR workflow when creating new materials will help generate better lighting and reflection results. Light objects from Revit are currently not supported. We have developed a workflow to bypass this issue. We use the replacement tool in Twinmotion to distribute light actors quickly throughout the space. Twinmotion allows for a flexible workflow. This becomes more important for interior visualization. Using shadow masks in a photography approach will help you improve the quality of the lighting solution. Twinmotion also offers several dynamic backgrounds that can be geolocated to simulate lighting conditions for the site in which your project will exist. Backgrounds can be also customized with HDRI panoramas and 360 images that can be used for lighting or to reflect existing conditions around your project. As we implement Twinmotion 2020 for production work, we're happy to learn about the new features and content that it offers. The Twinmotion content library has been expanded with a diverse set of high-quality 3D models from AXYC, XFROC, and Quixel. The, the new lighting and reflection solutions add more photorealism, and the improved scattering tools offer a more accurate and flexible experience. However, one of the most important features added to this release is the new Rhino plugin. We mentioned this earlier on some of our diagrams, but twin motion can really help to enhance the entourage process and cut down on time needed for post-processing, specifically in twin motion 2020, because of the vegetation painting and scattering tools that it offers. You can see that in the top right corner there. It gives you adjustable sliders for diameters, density, and you can even use multiple species of vegetation at once. You can put together grass and bushes or grass and flowers and you can really control how you want each of your scenes to look. We can start to eliminate the need for some of the additional post-processing software that we would typically use, which can equate to saving time and ultimately saving manpower and saving staffing. A great component within Twinmotion is that we can place Entourage in the entire model once. And as you set your different views, the Entourage reflects that view, which is unlike some of the typical post-process flow we've had before, where each view may need specific care for proportions. What is the camera angle? We need to fix the shadows. We may need to change the perspective. How does the entourage look in this image? One of the other great aspects that Twinmotion has is the large material library that it comes with and the ability for user manipulation for these materials. For example, on the right, I'm studying facade development, working with metal panels, and Twinmotion allows me to change the color, the reflection. I can change the scale the size of each individual panel, is there a certain bump on that? How can that read? And you can really tweak your materials to read perfectly through Twinmotion. So we've showed some of the aspects and some of the important qualities that real-time rendering and Twinmotion can bring to our process. And that's why we believe that the future is with real-time rendering. And we're gonna share a couple case studies to really show how that future is actually already here and how Canon Design is utilizing real-time rendering. But again, inserting real-time rendering into our process still comes with its challenges. So we'll talk about challenge number two, which is how can we afford to do more visualization in-house? And how do we approach that? We can start to introduce real-time dynamic lighting, which can start to improve our quality. So let's look at a case study. The Restorative Care Village is a first-of-its-kind project in Los Angeles, California. We recently wrapped up the design phases of this project and it's starting to move into construction. And we really utilized a team across the United States in Canon Design, as well as Canon Design Builders. The program for this project is a well-being campus for people with unstable living conditions. And it's a direct result of California's strategy to provide care for some of these most vulnerable residents. It's been recently estimated that almost 60,000 people experience homelessness in Los Angeles County, and this number continues to increase. The village is made of two key components. It's a total of five buildings, but there's four residential treatment programs with about 64 beds, and there's one larger four-story recuperative care center, which provides immediate placement options for recently discharged residents. 
We really utilize Twin Motion to enhance our design process for this restorative care village. You see some of the images on the right on this slide. Those are some of our original designs from the RFP and the interview stages, and they didn't exactly match with the design intent that the community and the client had had. And up until this point, the previous workflow really required multiple people in multiple offices. We had someone who was modeling in Revit, someone who was handling the renderings and working with the cloud, and we had some other people involved in Photoshopping and post-processing. It was a multiple stage process, and we really didn't have the time for this current method when we did a redesign. Our redesign really wanted to focus on community input. We wanted to create multiple views and multiple vignettes that really gave the essence of this project, but we needed to utilize a program that would be less time to create. We had roughly two weeks to create a completely new design concept to get to polished renders and to present them for the community and the, for the client. Typically, if we use an out-of-house rendering team, that can take roughly up to two weeks. You have to make your model, you have to send your model, you critique the renders that come back, you wait for your new renders, and you continue to repeat that. We really didn't have that time, and we really needed to communicate our new design intent through quality renders, and Twinmotion allowed us to do that. For this project, I used a SketchUp and Twinmotion workflow. And I like to use SketchUp because you can really develop multiple concepts relatively quickly for review. In the image on the screen, you can see what my process kind of looked like for this project. We started in the top left with a really simple concept, the simple form. We're starting to look at the structural grid where we may have glazing in the project. And by the time that we get to the bottom right image, we're looking at color, we're looking at panel sizes, we're looking at extrusions and pushes and pulls. It's really developing quickly and it allows us to have a lot of these iterations. We pair that with Twin Motion that also allows for really quick visualizations to be created to judge some of our design decisions. Another important component that SketchUp and Twin Motion allowed us to use for this project was to really develop the context. Our wellness village was right next to an existing healthcare campus, and SketchUp Warehouse had the buildings built already. So Twin Motion allowed us to really map these buildings and provide realistic context for our renderings, so you had the feeling that this building was now part of the site. While Twinmotion really allowed us to produce some nice concept design images for this project, we thought it was also important to mention how Twinmotion allowed us to advance the materials and the facade studies of this project. We talked earlier about the components that Twinmotion already had built in, the material library that really allowed user customability and how we could change our different materials. You can see in the bottom left on this image, it was an early concept diagram of how the panels may change and how we model the surface of this facade. And we love our early sketches and while these diagrams are important, they can really only go so far for a client to understand that. And with the fast paced nature of some of our projects, there wasn't enough time to send samples and get plenty of approval from everyone. So what we did is we created these different studies in Twin Motion using some of the local inspiration, some of the colors, the texture and the shadow, and we started to model these surfaces in Twin Motion and SketchUp. So here are some of the images from the project that we produced with Twin Motion. And I mentioned earlier the importance of creating multiple views and multiple vignettes to really address all the concerns of the client and the community and really give them an in-depth understanding of the full project. And we're really happy about the quality of images that we can get out of Twin Motion and the ability to use these images for press for the project. And you can see two recent examples on the screen here. Recently, Fast Company had recognized the LIC RCV as a world-changing idea finalist. And you can see one of our Twin Motion views there. And they've been used by multiple publications by Next City, The Architects Newspaper, and Archonnect. Now let's look at our second case study, the Continuing Education Facility Animation. Kellen Design was invited to participate in an interview for a science and technology project, which had a very short deadline. The same team decided the best way to visually communicate key design elements of the proposed building was via walkthrough animation. This project was not only complicated due to the amount of equipment and entrance needed, but also because the animation was being developed while design changes were being made to the building. Tunmotion was used for this task as we needed to make sure we met render quality expectations within a short deadline. The project was awarded to Khan Design and the animation played a big part on the win. After a few months, the client came back with several requests to update the animation for multiple fundraising events. Each time, more complex equipment and entrance were needed, and we were only given a couple of days, sometimes just a few hours, to complete the work. 
Since then, we have leveraged Twinmotion to create multiple high-resolution still renderings as well as other artifacts for marketing materials, all from the same Twinmotion file. These renderings and animation were quickly created by a single user without any need for a render farm. This means that Canon Design is able to put together more complex visual communication materials in a shorter amount of time and with smaller teams. Real-time rendering in Twinmotion has truly democratized visualization for our firm. In the past, we have relied on outsourcing this type of complex walkthrough animations to visualization studios. The Twinmotion animated library and tools have empowered our teams to take on more sophisticated animation work. Count Design has a flexible policy regarding what software our designers can use to do work with. We have Count Designers working on Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, 3ds Max, and even Modo and Blender. Interoperability is very important with any rendering package that we decide to implement into our workflow. To this day, Twinmotion is the only real-time platform that can interact with all kinds of file formats without a complex export pipeline. For this project, I use 3ds Max as a bridge to merge clean and prepared geometry from Revit and SketchUp. I use Autodesk InfraWorks to create a 3D model for the existing site surrounding our project. InfraWorks create polygon-heavy geometry, and due to the short nature of our deadline, I have to cut some corners and decided to import the InfraWorks file as is into Twinmotion. I was blown away with how much geometry Twinmotion was able to handle without experiencing any drop in viewport navigation performance. As you can see in these images, interoperability was very important in the making of this animation. Here is an example of how the user library feature was leveraged for this project. The client made requests to include more nurses and doctors as well as specific equipment such as stretchers and cover mannequins. 3ds Max was used to prepare all these specialized items. Now I'm going to play the final animation for this project. This case study is a perfect example of the benefits of a real-time rendering pipeline using Twinmotion. Since then, I have started a series of workshops focusing on the use of Twinmotion to help enhance our visual communication. I am very excited to see new visualization work being produced around Canon design using this tool. Since then, we have improved our workflows. Twinmotion 2020 has made it easier to produce animations such as the one described in the last case study. A Canon designer from our Chicago office, Ekta Wally, was able to learn the software and put together these animations for a project interview within two days. This is a testament to the friendly user interface, tools, and the learning materials provided by Epic Games. Here is our list of best practices when using Twinmotion for architectural visualization with Revit, Rhino, and SketchUp. The important points I would like to highlight are the following. Make sure to locate your 3D models close to the origin and 3D space. This is very important, especially if you're planning to import custom assets into your user library. Consider using the PBR pipeline when creating new materials. When importing 3D models with multiple material IDs, make sure to choose the option to collapse all in the import settings. This includes 3D models from software like Autodesk InfraWorks. Make sure to use groups and components in SketchUp to keep 3D geometry clean and organized. And although twin motion and real-time rendering programs are already changing our design processes, there are a couple things on our wish list that we think could make these programs even more valuable to be in our process. And first and foremost is the idea of collaboration. We as architects and designers really work together. You know, we pull up trace paper, we pull up big prints, and we work together around a table to solve some of these problems. And with twin motion right now, it only allows one person to be in the file at a time. And I equate it to 
the the past of using AutoCAD where only one person could be in it, but now the new BIM models and Revit allow multiple people to be in a project at once. So the ability to have people collaborate within Twinmotion would be an awesome piece to have in future versions. Adding to this wish list, it would be great to see more control over the quality of reflections in GI solutions. Why not add the option to enable RTX for high quality rendering tasks? This combined with the use of AI for the noising will make this tool a one-stop trip for all our visualization needs. This is a collage containing images being created around the firm with the use of Twinmotion. It is always great to hear back from our users and find out that they were able to complete the work on time while meeting expectations, but also that they had a lot of fun while working with this tool. I have looked over the shoulders of some of these users and observed their reactions when trying the weather tool for the first time. Their jaws always drop to the floor and it never gets old. Thank you Epic Games for the invitation to participate at Unreal Fest 2020. Thank you to all the attendees for watching this session and learning about how Twinmotion is democratizing visualization at Canon Design. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter and to contact us with any follow-up questions.